Um, physically, spiritually, I think I'm ready. And um, what we lack, I think, in last um, Olympic was funding. And for this kind of organization now, I think it will really help us to compete very well before the Olympics. And I believe by the special grace of God, we'll come back with medals. And not only with medals, with good medals by the special grace of God. I believe people are ready, but you can't just read their mind. But for me, I'm ready. <laughs> so I can't say about others, but I think everyone is ready. Strictly speaking, it takes four years to prepare for the Olympics. And it takes four years and more hours and hours of training and competition. We don't have that. There is no amount of thing that we can do now. So we can hope that the athletes have done enough by themselves to get to this level to go to the Olympics. You cannot just take a kid that are just, um, is coming out of not going to school and say he should write Waek or write Jam. It, it takes time, no matter how much. If it's, if it's a month to the exam, you can't just load everything. No matter how much you do, it won't pass. But it's the same thing in the Olympics. We, there are cycles, there are competitions, there are experiences you have to. You have to win, you have to lose, you have to gain confidence. So it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of determination, a lot of um, dedication to it. But, I keep on saying but, it's better we do something late than not to do it at all. Well, if we get our back room sorted, if we, um, everybody works together, which is a big if, then yes, we do can win a medal. We can, I don't know what color, shape, or size, but I think potentially, as we are now, the Nigerian team is capable of coming back with three medals from the Olympics. As, as, we, as I see the team now, we could win three medals in the Olympics. I don't know the color, I don't know the shape, I don't know the size, but we can win three medals. I'll keep that, I'll be tight on that, but I know we have three. I don't know if he tried to, try to dodge me. I was just like, he's not going to say anything. So, and if your Kudobong said we can win three medals currently, so coach, don't touch them. Don't, don't tell anybody to do any extra work. But, but that was really heartwarming, Alfred, um, coming from an Olympic gold medal, gold medalist. Um, but then he reminded us again. Uh, preparing for the Olympics is long term that requires a four year plan. Mm. And if you go to Bang, uh, the from the University of Calabar, I ran 98, uh, served, okay, served 98 there about two years later, he was in the Olympics mm. where he won. That was in Sydney, 2000. Then we were doing all the right things with school sports. That was from Calabar, I think he served in Kaduna uh, there about. I uh, came to Bauchi for a classic, and that was where I said, we saw uh, that classic go. two years down the there line. There you go. It wasn't, I was at the Olympics. Um, so, um, somebody that, um, uh, it takes somebody at that level who have reached that level to identify those who can win, and that's where really stands. And so far, if he says we can win three gold medals, a for an Olympic gold medal, you have to believe it. And yeah. all we need to do now Mm. Yes, like we said, we're doing the right things. A bit too late in the day, but hey, something can happen. So it's, it's coming from the performance of the yeah. world championships, yeah. you know. So you're as good as your last performance. For anybody that gets to the finals of yeah. any event at their world championship, it's a matter of hope. It's a matter of hope. That's right. So he says, we watch your So I'm sure he was counting. Ese Brume, he was counting. Toby Loba Amuso. Maybe Chukwe Buka in Ekweche for mm -hmm. short put. Mm -hmm. <sighs> he can't believe. Mm -hmm. He can add blessing to Kagbari. Mm -hmm. she's, she's, a, she's a star on, on her own right. Divine Oduduro if, on a good day. On a good day. So you see, so you see, we've got the talent. Mm -hmm. If Sheye Ogunlewe catch fix fire, he can do some. Raymond is also, uh, uh, Mekel. Mekel is also a good prospect. So we've got this prospect. Enabling environment, yeah. Alfred. Enabling environment. Who creates that environment? Ministry, they've said that they supervise the Federation. The Federations, they have a lot of work to do. Okay, tell me about Athletics Federation of Nigeria. Tell me. Presently in crisis. Uh -huh. Presently factionalized. Uh -huh. uh, presently trying to sort themselves so out. So how will such a Federation make a nephew dream of three medals become a reality. You see, we always forget. We think that 
It's just on the final product. No, it takes right. a lot. Alfred, it's 360 degrees. These Federation officials, they don't get it. And that's why we struggle. We, you and I know. We have 38 Federations. If we, you see? The ones that are active. We say 11 <laughs> to the Olympics. We are struggling to get 11 to the Olympics. Mm. We have 38. There are some Federations the entire year. Nothing. But uh, to be fair to, to some of the federations, there are some that might not have made it to the Olympics. But you look well, they, at the, you look at the programs that they're having. Yeah, handball, for example. Fantastic. They are doing one. Fantastic. Volleyball, volleyball is Beautiful. Working. They are working. Squash. At, squash. You look. Doing well. They, they're doing programs that we might not have. Yeah. We might not have reached there yet. To but, an extent, gymnastics. Yeah. We know them. They're, because they're um, if you do it, the media will know we'll, about it no, and will we'll report it. There's no way you will do these things and we uh. don't, and we don't talk about it. And, you know, like the Division One, um, like I like to call them Division One federations, like the likes of Taekwondo, where the programs, everything that they do, it's step by there. step, it yeah. is well articulated. Mm -hmm. You look at the programs. The other day they had the first English training program. Right here. Right here in Nigeria. That's right. With... Uh, world events. World events. Event. Coming event. from all around the continent, exactly. coming to Africa to attend this. Yeah. So that is an example of a federation hmm. that is working. And, and, and it boils down to leadership. leadership. Yeah. Who is the technical director? Uh, Chika, Chika Chukumerije. You see, this, the people just... An the, endless flow of information of what is happening. It will worry. <laughs> you see, while you are chasing some, they are doing they are, something, they are telling they are you. you well done. We know these federations. And because it's, we're, we're gradually winding up 2019, mm. we will come knocking. We'll ask you questions because you're accountable to Nigerians. What have you done in 2019? What will you do in 2020? Who we'll come for it for those federations? Cricket, cricket under 19. Good one. You, you see? Cricket under 19. And when cricket is First not... First time we'll, we'll be going to the World Cup, under 19 World Cup. In almost 100 years. We've not done Alfred, it before. they left the country 50 days to the competition. The competition will kick off in January. In January. They, they said they have to leave to go and understand South Africa. That's a federation that is working. Mm. And it is because of the leadership again. We have persons in there. Adam Zukwaya has done so much for cricket in Kaduna. So when he was elected the president, it was a matter of sustaining the momentum. Mm. When we say these things, persons just think that we don't know what we're talking about. But we, I still will not get tired. <laughs> ah, we, we keep asking questions until we get it right. Because we can't keep doing this. No, it's so simple. No. The ministry will not arrest you. Just resign that I can't lead a federation. I'm just wasting time. Or you're not accountable. Or you don't think of athletes' welfare. Or you don't even think of the fans. You don't think of us that support this, these sports when they, when they go out. So you see, just go. Next year, let's ensure that, that, that the, the persons that want to, 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 to move sport to the next level that we have administering sports in Nigeria. So that's it for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. We'll continue the countdown uh, just to let you know how ready our Team Nigeria will be before the competition gets underway in Tokyo, Japan. Let's bring the discussion back home now. Uh, talk about what's going on at the maiden edition of the Para Table Tennis Open. We love what we have seen after two days of action. Nigerian table tennis players, Para, they are telling us a beautiful story that impossible is nothing. They say feel the power of sports. Confine to a wheelchair, yet unstoppable, Alfred. Look at them playing table tennis. Uh, challenging persons that are saying that, look, I'm down and I'm out. They're saying no. Think of something you can do with sports and you'll be empowered. I love this story. It goes beyond just competing at a competition. There's a platform for these athletes to really um, get to that level of self-realization. Um, mm. I mean, people would have written them up. Stories would have been said. But these platforms like this just make them feel fulfilled and gives them an opportunity to qualify for international competition, nice. puts money in the pocket, and of course, give them the exposure, desire the, expo desire the exposure. Look it can only get better. Yeah. It can only get better because when they go for these international competitions and you're not well hung, you're not well prepared, and then you don't get a platform where yeah. you show what you can do, it becomes difficult. Alfred, so, over so 165 mm. players. I love this story so mm. much. Some of them no arms, some on crutches, these guys on wheelchair. 
but they are they are empowering me mm. they're telling me that look you can do something you can still win they are competing they're promoting the spirit of sportsmanship they are get they're promoting bonding oh i love this story you, talk of, um, you know sports gives you the opportunity of social inclusiveness thank you Alfred. i mean leave, thank give, you. it just gives you that leverage to say that hey these guys who are on the fringes of society are also members of the this society. society. They are entertaining able-bodied able persons of course, now. They of are course. there clapping for the, them. Those who it's say, beautiful. hey, I can't do it. You it's look beautiful. at something like it. It's, sent, it's you know, It's inspiring now that you're like you said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, gives you that leverage to say, hey, whatever. Yeah. No limitations. Nothing can stop me. How do I want to do it? Seven countries from mm -hmm. Africa. It was, was supposed to be eight. Egypt pulled out in the last minute. Egypt, why did you, you guys come? Because you mm -hmm. knew that Nigeria was going to beat you guys. But I love this story so much. So tomorrow we're going to be having the final mm -hmm. at the Teslim Balogun Stadium right here in Lagos. The Class 10 semifinals is an all Nigeria affair. Femi Alabi, that's for the ladies. Femi Alabi uh, taking on Blessing Agu. Uh, so we're definitely going to have a Nigerian female para table tennis player in the final. I love the story so much. In class 10 for the men, it's an Algerian player going against a player from South Africa. I just love the fact that they are not just playing table tennis. They are getting exposure. See, players from Ghana, they're here. Morocco, Algeria, South Africa, Benin Republic. Alfred, I just don't know, but I just hope that we keep this going because this is a very good way to empower these athletes. Now that this competition has come on stream, I hope it is sustained. And uh, given the, of course, there's no doubt that uh, Nigeria is the home of table tennis on the continent. Yes, um, our closest rivals, uh, Egypt. We know that each time the competition shows up. It's either it's going to be Nigeria or Egypt. And now that this has, you know, no, athletes have something beautiful. to look forward this to. This is beautiful. I mean, they look for something to look mm. forward to. It's, it's like this, this year, eight countries showing up or seven countries showing up. Next year, I, I'm sure it's going to be bigger. I know. More people will come so, in and uh, for the athletes. So and shout athletes. out to yeah. um, Sunday or Day Board Day Foundation uh, being supported by the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation. Of course, they have a sponsor. Shout out to everybody Definitely. supporting para table tennis. It's special sports. It's special to us at Channel Sports. We always show love to special sports. Let's listen to Faith Bazwaye. She's got a lovely story also, and she's using table tennis to empower herself. Let's listen to her. Right before now, Nigeria players, we are very good. But we, ha we lack that opportunity to go out and exhibit our performance. But in Nigeria, especially in para, in para table tennis, we have a great talent in para table tennis. I think this is the first time of this this kind of a, a program in Nigeria as a whole since ever table tennis and para table tennis started. This is the first time. And we are looking forward to it that this should not write off. That this should continue for us to have more stars to represent Nigeria in future Paralympic Games. Discipline has been highly maintained in this place. The players have been a pride to me as the referee because I've not had any serious issue of misbehavior. Secondly, it is also a, a, an opportunity for my umpires, some of whom have never officiated para table tennis at this level. Because this is an international tournament involving not only Nigeria, we have South Africa here, we have Morocco here, we have uh, Cote d'Ivoire here, we have uh, Algeria here, and they are very, very excited that they have not only the opportunity of playing against very senior players in Nigeria, but also playing against uh, players from other countries. The effect of that is that if they have opportunity now to go outside Nigeria to play, they will not be as green as they would have been if they hadn't had this opportunity. The sponsors have done greatly for these uh, athletes, and I just pray, as they have promised, that this is going to be an annual event so that these are players can get exposed and represent Nigeria well at international uh, table tennis levels so that they can win medals for Nigeria. So that's it. And uh, you know, when our para athletes go out there, they always do well. For instance, five para table tennis players have qualified 
for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. 14, 1, 4 para power lifters have qualified for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. They always do well. And that's what James Peters is saying. That let's just support them so that they can go out there and keep doing well. Uh, by the way, I said the record straight was Faith Ugweke that we listened to. Uh, and she said the same thing, that we have the players. We just need the support. Faith Bazwa is also uh, a professional para table tennis player. And we'll try to get her also on the show. Alfred, it's beautiful. I don't know. Um, let's just pray that this is sustained, that this thing keeps going. Listening to Peter Zeha, he yeah. did mention it that the organizers have said it's going to be an annual event. And I'm sure this will sound like uh, music to the ears of um, um, stakeholders uh, in, uh, in uh, this business, um, the uh, table tennis business. And uh, it's good because what the event is um, a world class event. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, the mm. packaging, the finishing, the leveraging that it gives to athletes, and it's an international event. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that those looking forward to it are not just Nigerian athletes. Mm. There are also para table tennis players from across the, con across the continent. That's right. Who say, okay, you know what? Last, last year, we couldn't make it. Um, six, seven countries showed up. You know what? We're going to be part of this program. Since these countries are using it to um, so help the athletes, we're going yeah. to show up. And so it can only get bigger, yeah, better. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, there's something about uh, hosting international events. There is an, ec an economy around it. Mm. I mean, when people come, they come with their money. Of course, they come to pick up your culture. They pick up one or two things. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's uh, money to the system. And so it's always good. It's always good to have um, uh, this kind of event and have this kind of uh, platform for people, especially Nigerians, give them the opportunity to, to exhibit yeah. their God-given talent. Particularly when they are special athletes. Yeah. That's the story right there. Thank you, Alfred. Let's talk about football now. Talk about match day 10 of the Nigeria Professional Football League on Sunday. Can play two United. Keep their fire burning when they take on Warrior Wolves in match day 10 of the Nigeria Professional Football League. Can Dakada FC uh, take the bragging rights from their senior brothers when they take on Aqua United? What can MFM do in Lagos against Adamawa United? Coming off that 1-1 uh, one -one, uh, draw against Sunshine Stars on match Match day nine. What can Kano Pillars do at home to FC Ifai Uba? Let's run through the fixtures. Alfred is looking interesting. Kano Pillars, since the return of the charismatic Rabio Ali, they've not lost a match. Nima uh, Mwagwa, he got the goal. Uh, he got the goal uh, last time uh, to pull level against um, Heartland of Way. Kano Pillars have been like a different team from the team I, that, started, wow. that started the league and they just Working up the points, picking up. They've gone on uh -huh. beating for how many games now? Started uh, started in, at, uh, at the New Jersey Stadium. Yeah, picked well, the points against Play Two United. Went away to beat Dakada. On, they were on fire Dakada FC. Went back to Kano. Went back to Kano. Destroyed. Do the other force now. Come on, go now. Come on, leave the league. <laughs> leave. The, uh, final sense for six party. six one. Sense They've been party. on fire. They've been going away, picking points. Let's see what they can do. Against Atlanta, we thought um, Atlanta lead. Nah, they are going to nah, the second half. We nah, thought okay. Nah, uh, they perhaps maybe up. they are beating off from that point and said no. They said no. Yeah. Uh, Human Wagwa got the goal in the yeah. second half. A late late goal and um, they survive yet uh, again. Now, Quora United. And uh, Quara United now. Uh, They've now gone back. winless two uh, two games. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're uh, trying. They to... lost to Hartland at home. Travelled. Uh, also lost on the road. So they're trying to get into the league. Can they do it back. against a struggling Rangers? Alfred Rangers. They well. They've played just seven matches. Uh, Sunday will make it eight. They are 19th on the log. I don't get it. Very I'm... very unfamiliar territory I for a know. club like Rangers. They are 19th on the they They've already. played seven and they've managed only one win this season. Yeah, that one win was against Sunshine Stars. That was the start of the season. That was at the beginning of the season. And it's sort of a bit of a struggle. Uh, the performance last time out against them, um, I, I thought Plateau United was a good... Uh, of course, they, they, they've been... I've seen Plateau United this season. I watched them in uh, Okipwe against Atlanta of Uwe, And I thought... That uh, in Mekaba has a very good team lined mm. up. The way mm. the mm. way they play, the way they move the ball, uh, they look a very their decent. Mentality has also changed. Remember, uh, they almost ruined their seasons themselves last last season. last season. You know, with that fight on day one against FC Fanuba. So now they've said to themselves that let's just focus on the football. 
That's business. So for Rangers, um, um, yes, they've not won. Maybe the last two, um, they drew on the road against um, uh, Wiki Tourist, uh, yeah. big points, came, came back, thought they were going to... Uh, consolidate, dropped points at home against Party United. Now they go to Quara. Now Quara, yeah, Quara is uh, a team that is looking to get the first win on their belt. So, mm. uh, something must give for Rangers. <laughs> if if they lose this one again, I mean, panic button again. They change Quara coach. Also struggling. Quara also uh, struggling. Two wins, and it was better for us that donated that before mm. they left. Mm. So they also need to do something. Uh, let's see what Enugu Rangers can do against Quara United. We talked about play two United. They will mm. take on Worry Wolves. Worry Wolves. Uh, also a decent side, Alfred, but. Uh, with this play to United team, let's just wait and see what's going to happen on Sunday. Another decent team this season has been Wiki Tories, though they've dropped to sixth on the log, but they haven't done badly. Wiki Tories, they've played nine and they've recorded four wins, mm. you know, drawn two and they've lost three. Mm. So let's see what they can do at home against Abia Warriors. Jigawa Golden Stars will take on Aimba. That's going to be a difficult fixture, but with the MPFL, you never say never. You never know uh, what's going to happen. Jigawa Golden Stars is 17th on the log. Aimba Bar, they are fifth on the log. Let's see if, if the People's Early fans can pick an away win in that one. Lobby Stars, I think they did a great job getting a point off Aimba on match day nine. Uh, let's see uh, what they can do uh, right there in Lokoja against, no, um, Makodi <laughs> against <laughs> Katsina United. This is the fixture for me on Sunday. Dakada against Aqua United. Aqua, hey. <laughs> That's one game that everybody already is talking mm. about. Dakar that second on the league. Uh, um, Aqua United themselves struggling, really struggling to make an impression over. Um, Coach John Obu is left. Yeah. In comes uh, Kennedy, Kennedy Bobo. Bobo. Kennedy and Bobo a winning Bobo start for him against and Rivers a United. Start. That win. That nervy. Win. Very nervy. That win. That yeah. win. Rivers United crying blue mother. The entire will you <laughs> celebrated that. They scored a thing. Blue mother. Nine minutes I mean, of the game. Yes, that's, uh, that. It, it, it comes to it comes to that. It just shows you that a team that really wants to get a win ah. under its belt. I bet um, for Kennedy Bowie is looking forward to a very very good run with that with Aqua United. This is a city derby. This is. Um, rivalry. This is uh, something that uh, you want to look forward to. Who's got the keys to the city? So we're looking at uh, Dakar Davos versus Aqua United. Um, um, yeah, it's uh, it's we said that both teams are owned by the Aqua Bomb State Government. Hey, hey, this one, I mean, who has the keys to the city? So we look at uh, uh, for Aqua United. Well, uh, more illustrious neighbors for Dakada. Uh, they will be struggling to make a statement. They've, they've been decent, I thought. Austin, I think they've been pretty decent this season. Very. Um, hopefully, Aqua United might just be able to assert themselves. I know. The way it is. Let's see. Let's see. So, uh, I know a lot of persons say, oh, Aqua, uh, Dakada will not go and give Aqua that match. <laughs> Dakada, they also want to make uh, an impression. I hope it's surprised if Aqua wins it. Okay, let's watch and see on Sunday. Let's go on this quick break now. When we come back, we'll go to the Emirates Stadium. Let's find out what's going on there. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.